So in here, okay, good, we're on the right microphone as well. All right, so we're gonna get started today building out a Lego game, a Lego Ninjago game specifically. Like I had mentioned just a second ago, Lego and Ninjago put together a game jam. I heard about it, got really excited, and wanted to participate. So this week, every day, I think Monday through Friday, I'm just gonna go through the process of building out a game and get it up and submitted for this jam. We'll see how it goes. I think it'll be a lot of fun though, and um, you'll get to see the process of a game being built from start to finish. We'll make it something that goes out on WebGL. I think that's kind of a requirement, is having a WebGL build available and then we'll uh, push it up and submit it at the end of the week. I've got a couple of ideas for the game, but before I get into those, I wanted to just show you what the requirements are because while I'm talking about the ideas for the game and stuff, I, I want you to understand why I'm making some of the decisions that I'm making. All right, let's dive into it. So hopefully the sound is still good. Just checking the, uh, the chat as well. I'm gonna be watching chat while we're gone. Or, oh, sorry while we're going. So let's take a look at the rules here. So it says that the top winners have their game playable in a retail Lego mini store. That's kind of like their, their headline, which is kind of cool, I guess. If you win and your game is cool enough, they're gonna put it into some of the little displays that they have in the Lego stores. If you've never seen the Lego stores, they're, they're really cool. They just have a bunch of Legos and Lego themed stuff, giant displays, giant oversized Legos and stuff. It, it's pretty cool. Been to a couple of them in the past in uh, California and Las Vegas. So I, I'd recommend checking them out, but that that's not the important part, right? Getting in and winning isn't really the important part. The important part is making or winning or building the actual game. Sorry, it says that there's a background delayed audio. I don't know why there would be some delayed audio. Let me see. Let me make sure that I don't, oh. There we go, sorry about that. Now it should be muted completely. Hopefully the echo is gone and I've fixed all the issues. I'll get the streaming set up back. Ever since I reinstalled, I've been trying to get all the things working again and streaming is not one of the things that's been uh, completely fixed yet. Works fine in Restream, but apparently not quite set up right in OBS yet. All right, so let's dive into the rules here. The first thing to note is that, well, the big important part, the one button game challenge. The game has to, reference or use one game. So it says for reference, take a look at this example of a one button game, to give you an idea of what it is. And the, the here, let's just read this, this paragraph. It says, now we're excited to launch the latest of our Lego ideas, launch our latest Lego ideas contest called the Lego Ninjago one button game challenge. This time around, we're looking at entertaining games made with the Lego Unity micro game. And that's something I wanna talk about in just a minute, the micro game part. It says with, the catch that they're work, they work only using a single button. It could mean carefully timing your jumps, double tapping to double jump, holding to charge, or anything else you can think of just using the one same button. So I'm thinking this is not touch screen, it's not like drag or click on specific areas, just button, like imagine you've got a big red button that you can push or hold down and then that's it. So you can tap it, push it as many times as you want. Kind of like a, uh, or thinking of it more like a joystick button than a touch screen. Otherwise, I think it's kind of breaking the rules. If you think of it like a touch screen, then it's very, very different. And it may end up running on a touch screen, I'm not completely sure, but there's always a possibility that they just make a big, big red button. You know, it's the kind of thing that places like that do when they put up displays. So we got to stick with the one button theme, but there are a couple other things. Um, it's got to be Lego Ninjago. Oh, well, they actually, they had three, three categories here. One was building a Lego Ninjago themed game, so just, a new take on ninja dev skills. It says. So building something that's just themed around Lego ninjas. Another option was using a theme of your choice that uses a one button game um, and their micro game stuff, but no third party IP. So just can't use something that's somebody else owns, right? You can't use like a, a Disney thing or a, I don't know, DC Comics or a Marvel or any of that kind of stuff. And then the last one was behavior bricks. And the behavior bricks are what come in the micro pack. So if you haven't used the micro packs before, when you first install it, um, it's going to like give you the option of running through some tutorials. So you can get, um, I, sorry, I'm trying to get my thoughts straight and reading chat, it, it kills me here. Um, 
So with the, the mini blocks, Behavior Bricks allows you to build out a game without actually writing any code. So you can essentially drop in some pre-built prefabs. They're, they're kind of, they are prefabs. They're prefabs with some custom stuff on there to make them work in this Lego ecosystem. And they just add behaviors to objects. So they can kind of snap together and add behaviors, kind of like you'd get in a Lego Bricks, like a Technics pack or something where you can put motors on and other things. Although here it's more of like a logic control setup. So you're adding logic control blocks and doing that. I don't think that I'm gonna use too much of the behavior brick stuff, to be honest, because while that's cool and it's interesting for people that wanna learn how to write or how to build games and stuff um, using those and don't know how to write code, I think that most of the people watching the channel and most of the people that are watching game dev stuff on here we're probably more interested in how to build the game just using C Sharp stuff, we're actually writing code. So we're gonna be writing a lot of code throughout the process to build the game. We will use the models and the characters and probably their minifigure stuff. They've got a one button setup for reading things. So I think I'll, I'll use that as a, a starting point, but I don't think that we'll dive too deep into using the actual blocks. Um, let's see if there's anything else on this page. Get started, so. Yeah, it just says uh, get started and then the contest runs through November 4th. I put a link to this down below, by the way. So if you want to go check it out, sign up, get into it, I highly recommend it. But for now, I think I'm going to jump over to my Millinote board, which is the other link that I've got down there. And you should be able to access this too. If you click on it, I think it'll even show you like where my mouse is and let you drop comments on it and stuff. And this is a board that I put together a couple days ago when I decided that I wanted to do the jam. I was like, all right, I need to come up with some ideas and then start collecting those ideas, figure out what I wanna do, and then have a place to kind of codify those ideas and build it out into a game. So I put together my board and started writing down ideas. And you see, I've got a list of ideas here. I've got an extra one in here in just a task list. And then I've got the uh, one finger death punch that Jason Story recommended as a good inspiration. And I think that that, that was a pretty good inspiration for me. It showed a, oh, let me open this rock star real quick. It showed a, a pretty fun game that you can build in a pretty complex setup with a single button. And I think that that would be neat, but as I think about the, um, the target audience more, I think that it's probably overkill. It's not really going to work well with, um, the people who would be playing this game. So a Lego Ninjago game like this, that's gonna be at stores or you know, even just themed like this, I think is gonna be targeted at kids, probably mostly boys, but kids that are four to 10 maybe at the oldest, maybe like four to eight. I think once they get to like you know, nine or 10, they're probably on to wanting to play things like Fortnite and bigger stuff and not, oh look, we can see other people's cursors, perfect. Um, and not just seeing, um, or, or not playing these, these simpler games, but this is gonna be something that's targeted more at that younger range. And I really wanna theme it around the Ninjago stuff, because like I said in the email that I sent out, I got a five-year-old who loves Ninjago, we watch it all the time, and I think that it would be pretty interesting to, to build something using that and kind of have some fun with it. So I'm gonna take a drink and then kind of go through some of these ideas, and then we'll look at chat and see if there's anything else that comes in as a cool idea. But otherwise, I've got one that I'm kind of leaning towards and I'll sh share what that is in just a second. Ah. All right. Oh, NFT game. Yeah, we'll make an NFT Lego Ninjago game. There we go. That'd be terrible. <laughs> Your special Lego. All right, so a couple of the ideas here. One was just a game where you're like, climbing or jumping to the top of a tower. This could be like a doodle jump type thing where you jump up and through things or jumping off of walls, like wall jumping back and forth to get up and off of obstacles. Um, it could definitely be kind of fun. Another one of the ideas was like a blocks falling down type game with um, something like you see in arcades where the blocks go across and then you time the hitting the button and then it falls down, kind of like a Tetris too. There's some I think there's a mention of Tetris in here as well, but essentially the blocks falling down into the right spot. So you have to, the thing would be more about timing when to hit the button than um, hitting. So it's just basically just a timing game. Hit the button at the exact right time, right? Oh, must use behavior bricks is one of the rules. Okay, so we'll use some behavior bricks as well. <laughs> okay, 
We'll have to figure out how to use it. I didn't realize that. Thank you, Tech Dave, for pointing that out. So we'll use some behavior bricks and some code then. All right, next one was a Morse code teaching game, which could be cool, but I think that four-year-olds are probably outside of that range. They still don't know the alphabet, um, let alone other versions of it. Uh, crane game is kind of the same as the brick one, and I think this could be neat for like picking a character or like, have a bunch of Lego dudes down there, a bunch of minifigures, and then have the crane go and you hit the button to pick your character. Like you, know, you hit it once and it stops going over, hit it again and goes over again, then it goes down and just picks up whatever the, the nearest um, ninja is. That could be kind of neat, like as even if it was just like a character selection method, it could be kind of cool and flashy. Outside of that, I think that the timing stuff is, like, making that the core mechanic is probably too difficult, but having it be like a fun little thing where they pick something could be cool. Uh, Ninja Stars game could be cool, but the one of the rules was that you can't have, um... oh, sorry, so here, let me go back to the rules on that in a second. So one of the rules was that you can't have weapons. So let's jump back into this. Let's search for weapons. Let's see, where were the rules? Lego Ninja, here it is. I think this was the one with the rules. So for the um, behavior bricks only, yeah, that was a specific competition, right? Now, are you, where was the part that says you're required to use a, a brick? Okay, let me see it in here. Yeah, four-year-olds don't know the alphabet. They know part of the alphabet, they can say it, but they usually can't read and recognize the whole alphabet. They can, they, they're, they're starting to get there, like kindergarten, right around when they start going through the whole alphabet, being able to recognize it and read it and write it and all that kind of stuff. All right, so let's see what the, do they have rules here? Here's the rules, read more. So ninja themed game, yep, okay. Rules, never built a game. Sorry, just gonna read through this real quick. The jam is going on through the beginning of next month, by the way, for anybody that was interested. So you bring your skills. Are you a keen studio builder? Okay, once you built your game. Where are the rules parts? I find the exact requirements to make sure that we uh, we follow along and, and don't miss anything. So, yep, we're going to do it on a computer or a laptop. That seems fine. Um, submit the game. We're using 2020.3 LTS. And that's, if you want to get started and try to build this yourself too, you want to build a, a game for the game jam, make sure that you grab the LTS one. You'll see this Lego theme template as like a new project creation option if you have the LTS. If you don't have that installed, you just, I guess you just don't see it there. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just part of the installer or something. But let's see what else is here. How to get started with Unity. Yep, that's prizes, how it works. Submission phase, judging how to enter contest rules. Okay, must be the original creator. Sounds good, except for the Lego models, I assume. Um, entries must be new creations. Not allowed to use any official Lego element in your entry. Okay, must be genuine. Okay, I don't know. Oh, okay, that's interesting. You can't cut glue or modify. I wonder how much of this is copied from like real Lego competitions, right? Can't reference anything outside. If you're submitting a Ninjago game, you can reference Ninjago. Okay, so that was one of the things I was curious about is if I could reference other Lego themes too. And I'm curious, I'm guessing maybe not. So I'll stick with just Ninjago stuff and just the things in the kit and not any extra Ninja stuff. Um, images, and, oh, okay. Contest entries, okay, yeah, no politics, no religious stuff, no alcohol, sex, profanity, death, killing. See here, no death, no killing, no blood. Um, I think we can avoid terrorism, horror, and torture pretty easy. No FPSs, no warfare or war vehicles, uh, no large scale or human scale weapons of any kind, including swords, knives, guns, sci-fi, fantasy blasters, etc. So, I mean, when it comes to Lego ninjas, like, it's a lot of what they do is fighting. So, a lot of the themes kind of go out with that. And then, is there anything else? I wasn't, I'm not seeing anything that necessarily required a brick, but... Lego Ninjago, okay. Okay, it does have, yeah, use of bricks right here. Use of bricks, use of scripting, and quality. Okay, that's what they'll judge on. Got it, okay, so we'll use a little bit of bricks in there. 
and I wanted to just, again share what the rules were because we can't do any fighting stuff. So ninjas and the uh, tanks one that Jason recommended, cool idea, but we can't use that either. Funny thing is some of the examples in there I think are against the rules too. They have a spin jutsu sample. We'll take a look at it in a second. I'm pretty sure that that would break the rules. Um, an auto runner slash endless runner where the ninja like double jumps. Um, this could be cool and they, they have one kind of in there already. There's this little runner game. I don't know that it would be interesting enough for everybody because there's really not much to do if you build that. So I think that I'll skip that and I think there will probably be quite a few of those. But I was considering maybe like a running across buildings jumping type thing. So it's one of the ones I'll leave in as like a considerable thing, but I'm not sure. A racing game, um, this actually could be kind of cool if it was just like the ninjas racing and you just got to hit the button to, um, to race faster. That could be fun because then it's just about like how fast can they hit the button. It, it's not a very skill based thing. Um, but then again, if you're dealing with four year olds, you know, it's, it doesn't matter <laughs> if you got skill. So maybe a racing thing could be cool too. Uh, customization of a character. I think I'm gonna skip that. That's an interesting idea, but like being able to build out some Legos and build out a character and stuff, I think that's probably too complicated. And I want to limit this down to like a 30 second to maybe like a one minute experience so that a kid walking by could walk up play for a minute or loading it on a web page, play for a minute and then be done. Um, and not not have to sit there for 10 minutes distracting, you know, getting the parents angry and keeping the kids away from shopping at the Lego store like they're supposed to do, I guess. <laughs> All right, so you got Ninja running from clicks. That kind of fits in with the, uh, the racing idea. Let me make a board of ideas that I kind of like. So I'm gonna take to-do list. Um, drag that over and I'm just gonna take some of the ideas that I think might work. So Ninja Running from Clicks, which is also like a racing game. It's the same kind of thing. Uh, the climbing idea and then there was one other one, the auto runner. These are kind of in the lead right now for ideas that I like. Um, there we go, just add a note so I know. Uh, this was one uh, that I had added from mobile notes. So I was going through my mobile notes. I oh, can see I got another one for Lloyd right there. Um, where you just maybe do a ninja game where you select the right ninja for each task that you have to do. And I thought that would be really cool for kids that are really into like Lego Ninjago knowing like which ninja does each thing. And maybe it'd still be okay if it's like at a very simplified version, but I was realizing that most kids aren't gonna know. They're just gonna like the Legos and the ninjas. They're not gonna know which ninja does what thing or what ninja has what power. So unless it's like really obvious, like, hey, here's some ice, get the get the red ninja um, to melt it type thing. Um, I don't know that it would necessarily work except for, for like hardcore fans, which I don't think this is really targeted at. Uh, we've got the Tetris block stacking. That was one I talked about. Rhythm game is another one where it like maybe plays some um, sound and some music along and you have to like you know jump to the beat or do something else to it i'm not sure exactly how that would look but it's kind of, i'm gonna drag it over here because it's kind of a neat idea uh the spinning plates one i don't have a good idea of how that would work and then a runner with stealth instead of jumping so instead of um it's an interesting idea but i don't know how the stealth would work like you're running and then you hide and then you run and you Hide. I don't know. I, I, I think it could be cool, but I'm still struggling to to figure out exactly how that would work. Running and racing would be fun, but one button. Yeah. The run I agree. Running and racing so running and racing if it was maybe like um a rhythm thing though, where like you have to if you tap it to the beat, you get it. But I think that tapping to a beat might just be too difficult. Maybe just tapping whenever the light lights up. And every time the light lights up, you tap and maybe make that go along with a beat, right? So that like you've got some music going, you've got a beat going, and then when the beat hits, the light comes on, you have to hit the button. And when you do, he gets a speed boost or something and he starts speeding up. Something like that. Yeah, that could be cool. All right, that, that's definitely a consideration. All right, let's jump into the actual project, see what it looks like, take a look at the actual examples and then we'll figure out which one of these I wanna go with. I'm heavily considering either the climbing and jumping up to the top 
making a game where you kind of like ninja jump back and forth wall jumping or some sort of a, a rhythm racing game. Let's just jump in though and see some of the examples first. Because I think that once we see that, it might give a little bit more inspiration. All right, we'll go into the scene. So here I've got a project. I just called it Ninja Go, and I pulled in the two packages. If you go to Window and Package Manager, or I guess it was just the one package, the Lego Ninjago uh, micro game add-on. So I added this, went through, went to my assets, pulled it in, imported the package, and I've got it there. That was after creating a new project using the um, Lego micro game kit. So that's one of the options if you install the LTS. You see that, you can create the micro game and then you get this add-ons folder. Inside the add-ons folder, I had a scenes folder and then that had three different examples. So this first example I thought was kind of funny because it, I'm pretty sure doesn't match with the rules at all. This one, you're spinning around and then bad guys will come and you'll have to throw out little daggers at them. So you can see if I can time it, oh, I messed up, I died. Pretty, pretty uh, simple, pretty straightforward. I don't think there's much to this game at all, uh, except it's got the downside of, oops, you can't actually do this because well, it breaks the rules, right? <laughs> it's got weapons in it. Plus, it's just not very fun for me. So I'm gonna stop playing that and go into the next one. There was a sky brown, Skybound Rescue, which one is this? This is the, is this the bigger one or is this the, no, yeah, let's play this one. So this is the Flappy Birds clone. So let's try it. You see, you can see the whole level there. You got a, a flying ninja, got a bunch of things to avoid. If I touch the ground or any one of these moving bad guys, my entire airplane thing, oh, there you see, just blows up and explodes. I'd probably get to the end of this thing, let's see. Just fly on through, you can see it's kind of like loosely animating a little bit back and forth as we fly. As, it, as we go up, it tilts, and then as it goes down, it tilts a little bit the opposite way. Ah, I keep hitting things. I don't know, I so on the weapons thing, I just assumed that it meant no weapons, so I was just gonna avoid weapons in general just to not have it get disqualified. And it wasn't very, it, I guess it's just not very clear what it is, what the rules are. Maybe it's supposed to be that you can't just build like a giant sword out of Legos and they just didn't get the rules translated over to the game part right, but I don't know. Let's see, am I gonna make it here? Apparently being distracted by talking makes it a lot easier to win at Flappy, uh, Flappy Lego. Oh, well, almost easier. All right, so that's one of them. That's another easy one to implement. We could definitely do something like that in a relatively, we could probably do that in like an hour a flappy bird, it's be mostly building out the level and getting all those dudes moving up and down. Let's try this last one though, the Master Wu's training course. So this one was uh, the endless runner kind. Or it's not really endless, it's a runner to the end of the level kind. So let's see if I can get here, get to the end. And at the very least, I wanna start thinking of like what Lego assets here I wanna use. Like which ones of these blocks do I wanna use? If I did a runner game um, or a racing game, What's that track gonna look like? Um, can I make it? Ooh, all right, made it to Master Wu. And there we go. The other thing that's in here was a lot of audio, by the way. So let's stop playing. And I'm going to see if I can figure out, hold on a second, there we go. If I mute this, if I learn how to use a computer right, I might be able to let you hear the audio. So let's turn on some audio for a second. I'll turn it on for my stream. Now I shouldn't have any of that um, extra noise anymore. Let's see, let's just hit play. There you go. Hopefully you can hear that. If that's really loud, let me know and I'll just turn the the volume of that down. It might also be really low too, I'm not, oh, maybe it was all the way down actually, hold on. Let's try that again. <laughs> I think I had the volume turned all the way down. There we go. Yeah, and somebody mentioned that all these games seem to be boring. That's pretty much what I would expect from some 
ninja example games. I, I wouldn't expect them to be super exciting, fun games. And realistically, I mean, you're building something for kids. I wouldn't expect it to be super exciting for people outside of that, that target. But I guess we'll see. Um, let's get started now with actual project creation, I think. I want to jump back over to my Milanote board if I can find it. Yeah, oh no, I actually I want to jump into the audio folder first. I lied. I forgot. I wanted to do this. I wanted to show some of the audio that's in here. So there's a whole bunch of different audio in here for collections, it looks like. And you can see I've got the autoplay option down here. I just wanted to show this because this is one of the few things that I learned recently that was really cool. Uh, autoplay there. So when I select one of these, there, we can hear you see there's just lots of Master Wu talking, it looks like. Let's see. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so... Uh, sorry, I was listening through all of these and getting myself distracted again. I think I'm leaning towards the racing game. It's either the racing game or the the jumping one. Let me jump over to, to my ideas here. So either one where they're racing and they'll either like, I, I was thinking with a racing game, we could have multiple ninjas side by side. They're just, all, you know, maybe it's three of the ninjas are in a race and they're running somewhere and then you could jump to collect things. And then when you collect those things, you'll run a little bit faster. And as you keep collecting them, you'll go faster. That might be kind of fun. It might be kind of boring. It's mostly just about timing to catch the jumps and eventually you make it to the end of the race. And then it's like a timed experience. It lasts for 30 seconds or maybe 60 seconds, whatever it is. And then you get to the end and you can try again and you can race as a different ninja. So you could pick, you, maybe you pick one of the ninjas that you want to be as the racer. I don't know, something like that. Um, the other option I'm considering was something like a, the climbing, jumping, bouncing back and forth on walls. So like you jump up, jump off another wall and kind of like wall jump and essentially timing the jumping. So like when you gotta hit, hit the button when you jump or when you're ready to jump. So once you get to the wall, being like once you get close enough to the wall in the trigger of the wall or something, you jump and then you'll go up a little bit higher and maybe make it to the end of the end of the tower or something, get to the top of the tower and get to Lloyd's birthday party or something like that. So racing or climbing, those are my two options here I, I'm considering. Um, you know, it looks like a lot of people so far in chat are saying that they like the racing idea. So maybe we'll go with that. And if it's not fun, we don't like it, then we'll just switch over to something else. It's not gonna be too difficult to to build a game and, and really get it going. So let, let's get started. Hey, what's up, Josh? All right, let's see. I think I'm gonna just begin by, well, first let's take a look at how this character works. So I wanna show the character that we've got in here. We'll take a quick peek at how it works and then we'll set up a new scene with our own character and have him start running and racing and get ready to actually build out kind of a, a racing game. So we've got, what is this guy? This is, Kai here, and Kai has got a bunch of scripts on him. You can see he's not, he is a prefab. I can actually take a look at it, but he doesn't have a hierarchy in it. And you notice this a lot with a lot of these Lego dudes. They don't have a, um, a hierarchy in there. They're kind of built a slightly different way. Um, then what, I guess with this minifigure, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But when you see the bigger Lego figures that we'll take a look at in a minute or make a little bit more sense what I'm talking about. But here you'll see that we've got a character controller. So just a standard Unity character controller. Looks like it's got an animator. Um, not too complex. Does a couple different uh, transitions. What do we got here for parameters? We've got a play special, a special ID, and a cancel special. So I guess these are probably canceling the specials. What are these? No, what's, where are the specials? Jump, jump. Jump, where, oh, here's special, got it. Okay, and then that's going into a blend tree. So we got a play special, go, oh, wow, Jesus. That was not what I was expecting. There are a lot of animations here, okay. So there are, wow. A 
ton. Okay, so they've got a lot of animations and they're all just set up with an ID. And I'm guessing that you just look here, you see the IDs for each one of these and they're probably mapped out somewhere too. Let's take a, another look at the Kai real quick. So I wanna go back to the prefab here. So that was the animator controlling those animations. We'll probably just be using run and jump. Maybe, maybe a walk, I don't know, like some sort of idle or something. So you probably won't use that animation controller, but maybe we'll leave it in there, we'll see. Uh, it's got the character controller, it's got this minifig script. Take a look at this. Minifig script has, um, I think this just controls their, their minifigures, and you'll see there's some other scripts attached to it that kind of tie it all together. Let's see, this, there's not a whole lot, that was kind of like the parent there. We've got the audio source, the animation controller for the face. Okay, but there are no animations prepared off. I'm not sure what that part is. And then the actual minifig controller. So this controls a lot of the character's movement and stuff, which I think is probably a good place to start. There's no reason to recreate this. We've already got it in here. We'll use this as kind of the, the base piece for moving a character. But if we want to do the input or the controls, we're going to have to probably separate that out. Let me think about this for a moment. So we've got input options here. Uh, we can disable the input for the racers that we're not gonna race as the player and then just enable it for the ones that we are gonna use. Actually, I don't think we're gonna use this. There's another script. There's a one button minifig controller. We'll take a look at that one in a second. But we could use something similar to this. But you can take a look at some of the options here. We've got an option to control the max number of jumps, how fast the dude moves. So I can crank this up to like 15, give him four air jumps. Let's just hit play real quick. Let's just make sure that, oh, actually I'm in prefab edit mode. Should have backed out of that first. Here, let's, let's back out of prefab edit mode real quick. Save changes to my prefab so that he can jump four times. There we go. And then we'll, uh, oh, there's my one button minifig controller. That's the one I want to look at, I think. Oh, what? Why is my instance not jumping four times? Let's take a look at this. Kai. Oh. Oh, this is a different... Oh, because I removed it. I changed it. When did I do that? Oh, I didn't. Interesting. So they've done that on the prefab. That's very strange. Okay, so let's take a look at this. On Kai here, on the one in this in the scene, it's using the one button minifig controller that I was thinking of. On the prefab, it has this other one. That's where I got all mixed up. So the prefab doesn't match the instance it's placed in the in the example scene. The example scene's actually got an update to the prefab to use the one button one. So we've got this one jump, and this is the one I wanted to look at. This is what I was looking for before, but wasn't seeing and was getting a little bit mixed up. First, I'm gonna crank up the max jumps and just turn up my, uh, well, ooh, we've got max speed and acceleration. Let's turn up the max speed a little bit more, see what that's like. I'll leave rotate off and everything else off. Just run, play. Just want to show some of these settings so I, I can see I can jump four times. And he's picking up more and more speed. And I can almost make it across the whole thing now. Oh, look at that. I'm an expert, right? So, <laughs> cheating skills, right? So, th that's some of the settings that we've got on here. But this one button minifig controller is what I wanted to look at because it's already got, I think, set up for dealing with one button. I mean, we're building a one button game. We don't have to do too much for input. It seems like you can just stick with this. It's got an option to move forward continuously. Makes sense. Oh, it looks like there's a distance one too, so it'll stop at a distance. That seems perfect. We could probably use that somehow. Maybe we don't need it, but let's just use it, leave it at continuous for now. An option for which direction to move. Seems good a max speed, uh, rotate. Oh, continuously or at an angle. Okay, so if I wanted them to rotate and actually like run around a track. Interesting, what does this do? Let's, let's try to turn right at 180. I have no idea what that means. Oh, this is a very, very tight turn. Okay, so I could make them run in a circle around a track if I wanted. That could be more interesting than running straight if they were like, racing around a track or something. Now, maybe it wouldn't be more interesting, but it's an option at least. And then let's, let's set that back to the straight for now. And then we've got some options for what to do when the button's pressed. So should we move, should we rotate, or should we jump? And then same when it's released. And I think just leaving it at jump makes sense, or 
Maybe we'll make it um, move, let's see what this does. So if I change it over so that instead of jumping, it moves when we press the button. Uh, I just wanna see what that does. Play. All right, it just kind of started moving. <laughs> Did not seem to do a whole lot, just kind of kicks off moving. Um, oh, and then I bet when you do, when released, you would do stop. So then you could hold it down to walk, release it to stop, or hold it down to walk a certain distance, and then it would automatically stop once it reached that distance. That makes sense, okay. Cool, so we've got that. We've got step audio clips. That's just for footsteps. I don't know why that's not there. Why that's not set. It's kind of strange. There's a jump audio clip set to step. Very, very strange. I wonder, let's, let's assign these real quick. I bet it's just really annoying in here. You just hear his steps constantly when he's running. That's probably why. Make him auto run. Oh, I can't change it at, play, at run time. I'll have to stop playing. Go select Kai one more time. I'll put him on auto continuous move and jump. Just make sure that these footsteps do what I'm thinking. Okay, yeah, I can hear the, the footsteps. Interesting. Okay. Ninja Frogger in traffic. That could be interesting too, but I don't know if there's any uh, any models like these that, and I don't know if I want to, maybe just have like some cars going by. You gotta just walk up, hold the button down to go, and then stop when it's time to stop. Could be interesting too. Um, let's try building out the race thing with this, this Kai dude first though. So we've got the one button minifig controller. I know that we're gonna need that and then maybe some of these other things. I think I wanna start by just uh, making, oh, let's see, what do we have here for scenes? Let's see what they've got in their um, their default scenes real quick. I say I wanna make a new empty scene, but I wanna see if they have a cool, like a, uh, oh, that's a, an interesting one. I haven't seen this one. Let me play on this real quick. The evil machine. I don't think I've seen, I haven't seen this one. Oh, okay. Essentially just jumping and dodging stuff. Okay. Check these other ones real quick. Interesting. Pandemonium. Okay, let me find these uh these ground pieces. So these are rocks. Let's find these in my models. So they're using a bunch of rock models here. They've got a minifigure. And then I think in the add-ons, there were some more, yeah, some more rocks and stuff that are just being used to build out the, um, the environment. I just wanna make sure that I've got the same stuff kind of figured out, and then I'll start building something out real quick. So we've got, it's in prefabs. Models, we've got a couple buildings, some ninja bots, we might use those, and some, what are the vehicles here too? Oh, the plane, and oh, Zane Sub, okay. Interesting, that could be a fun one too. There'd probably be a lot of fun sub-based games you could build. All right, I'm gonna start with just racing and running though. So I'm going to create a new scene. Just make a brand new, nice little basic scene. And then I think I'll start by just putting out some rocks. So just begin with a big open rock area. I'll make my dudes race around that and then we'll uh, go from there. So let's see, let's find models, Lego. And we've got rock one, rock two, rock three. Where were those those bigger rocks? They were under, let's see, yeah, rock large. Let's take that, drop it right in here at, oh, I want this at zero, zero, zero. There we go. And then let's give it a material. So find the material for this rock. I have no idea where that is, but I assume if we search for rock, we'll find it. Rock light, rock dark, and rock medium. Perfect. We'll just start with medium. All right, so we got a big old rock and the sucker's not flat. That's not what I want. So let's find one that is flat on the top. Maybe the medium one will work better. Change this material to the rock medium. Ah, there we go, perfect. 
delete that large one, and then I'm gonna reset the transform on this thing and then make it huge. I think I'm just gonna like triple the size or let's make it five times the size. Let's make it a giant, giant rock, hopefully big enough to run my character around on. Now I'll go find one of those characters. So we have the Lego models, no, the minifigs. We've got Kai here. I wonder if any of them have the one button script on them by default. Nope. Kai, Lloyd. Um, I'm gonna start with Lloyd or Lloyd. And we'll just drop him out here and hold down W mode, hold V, see if I can get him to snap. Is he snapping down there? No. Okay. Something weird with that. I think it's just the way that the colliders work with this. So I'm just gonna get into a position that seems good. Control. Actually, you know what? Let me reset them to zero, zero, zero. Reset. There we go. Perfect. I'll just put it right at the center point of the world to start. So we've got Lloyd here and he should just automatically not, let's see, what should he do by default? He, oh, it looks like he'll probably just run around. So my guess is that I can run around WASDM. Oh, let's put a camera behind him though. So take the main camera, make it a child of Lloyd. And um, here, yeah, let's hit play. It's already staring at him. Oh, he's falling through the ground. Oh, we don't have a collider on the rock. Let's add a mesh collider. There we go. Play. All right, we got Lloyd and he runs around with WASD and jump. All right, now we need to turn this into a one button Lloyd because we don't want Lloyd running around and jumping with WASD. So I'm gonna add in the, let's just search for one button. One button minifig controller, perfect. And then I guess we'll remove the minifig controller. Now for the one button action, I'm gonna make it be, well, actually let's, let's start with make it be continuously walk when pressed and then when released, we'll stop. Just to make sure that that works. All right, it's looking good. This is way too easy. All right, let's take the camera here and I wanna drag it up because where's my, why can't I see my camera child here? That's weird. So I made the camera a child. It's not, that is so strange. My camera is like missing. I have never seen this before. Let's save the scene. Maybe something's just bugged out. Make a new scenes folder. And we'll call this racing. All right. Now I'm gonna just reopen the scene and hope that my camera shows up in the in the inspector. I'm not sure what happened or why it's missing. File, new scene. Yes, you can use your own script. Somebody was asking about that. You can use your own scripts for this. Um, they just had the an additional category where you can enter with um, only using the blocks and not using your own scripts too. So if you want to enter that version of it, then you have to use only their own their blocks. But if you want to win or if you want to use your own scripts, that's definitely an option too. They even had an option to do it with blocks without using the Lego Ninjago dudes. But I think the Lego Ninjago dudes are what makes it cool. Where did my camera go? This is so strange. I have never seen this happen before. My camera literally just like, it's there, but I can't see it underneath Lloyd. I'm just gonna delete Lloyd. <laughs> we'll delete him and I'll just recreate him because I don't know what happened there. And I think what I'll do instead is just set up a camera for real. So instead of trying to make it a child of this prefab and making it, letting it act weird, I'll just create an actual one. So let's see, not under Lego, we wanna go under the add-ons and then the prefabs and the minifigs. I'll go take Lloyd, drag him out, and then I'm gonna create a Cinemachine camera. So I think I'll create a Cinemachine, what do I wanna make? Make a, should I make a target group camera? I'm trying to think if I wanna make a target group camera, or just a simple, let's start with just a virtual camera that stares at the guy. And then we'll consider, may, uh, may I make like a dolly camera that follows along or something instead. I'm not sure what I wanna go with. So for now, I'll set the follow target and the look at target to Lloyd. And then we need to, we didn't get a uh, actual camera. So let's create an actual camera. A camera, and then this didn't get the Cinemachine brain. So I'm just gonna add that automatically. All right, so we got the brain on the camera. Should have been automatically added, but something weird happened in there with my, my camera setup. 
And then I've got my V-cam. I'm gonna offset this sucker, so we'll just raise it up. Let's see, raise that follow offset a bit to, I don't know, five meters, and we'll pull this back 20 meters. So I've got a little bit more distance here. So play, all right, I've got my, my Laloid here. Uh, the camera twist is terrible, but you can see that it's working. He, he's there and following it. Um, let me see. I want to change this. I don't want to have him in that free turn mode. I want to remove the minifig controller. Oh, I can't. I need to add in the one button minifig controller first. So I add the one button minifig controller here, and then I should be able to remove this one. My guess is that there was a component that required it, so it didn't allow me to remove it. I'll remove it now. And okay, we've got the one button one. All right, so for actions, we'll just jump when pressed, nothing else, and we will automatically run forward. For rotation, I'm just gonna automatically rotate to, let's see, what does angle do? Angle, turn right, oh, it turns only to that angle. I don't want that, I want it to continue turning, and let's turn this down to maybe like a 60. That'd be a slightly wider circle is my guess. All right, there we go. He's running in a somewhat bigger circle. Let's stop playing. And now I'm gonna make this circle a lot bigger. So for now, I'm gonna have him just race around this thing. And then maybe I'll, um, I think, do I wanna have him race straight or around? I'm, I'm gonna go with the circle for now, just so I don't have to build out a whole, a whole level. And then I'll consider making it so that he races straight and like building a little map if I decide that racing game is still the way they don't want to go. So let's move Lloyd over here. Let's turn down his rotation even more. So instead of a 60, I'll go to like a 20 and then I'll hit play. I'm going to pull the game view and scene view side by side. Let's stop playing. Let's get these up next to each other here and then keep an eye on Lloyd. So he is definitely running off in the wrong direction. He's going to run right off the edge of the screen. I'm going to uncheck maximize on play, stop playing find Lloyd, figure out, oh, he's facing the wrong direction. I thought he was facing that way and he was gonna run kind of in a circle, but he's facing the other way and he's gonna run right here. So let's just rotate him around. Let's flip him 180 on the Y axis and then he should kind of continue in that kind of loop. Let's see. Or, <laughs> that's the character's name in here. <laughs> There's a, a Lloyd in chat as well. Got Lloyd Garmadon here. All right, so there he is. He's running and racing. Perfect. All right, let's take another drink here and then we'll figure out, um, well, well, we can jump, right? Woo! All right. Step one, done. All right. <laughs> Yes, we could definitely add a spline and have them do a, a jumps along the spline track or something too. We, we definitely do a lot of cool stuff with this. I just kind of wanted to get, I, w I really wanted him to run in a circle just so that he would run indefinitely while I tested him out temporarily. And then we can kind of build out um, what we want from there. So I think the first thing we could do is just put in some obstacles, just some simple obstacles that you jump over or they, or you knock them over, right? So that way you have to jump. If you time the jumps, you go faster. If you don't time the jumps, you knock them over and fall a little bit behind. Seems pretty simple. Let's just go in and find some Lego bricks that we can drop right in front of him. So let's see, obstacles, perfect. I was thinking like, I hope they have some kind of obstacles. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, there's this weird one. Um, oh, you guys can see it's kind of small here. Let's bring up the preview a little bit bigger. So we got this obstacle, which actually is probably good for jumping. Um, enemies on elevators and moving platforms. That could be interesting too. Uh, stone fighter cannon, I don't know what that is. Dummies, I don't think I'm gonna use those. And then a trap, oh, what's this trap do? Let's see, let's see what trap one is. I'm gonna pull this out here. Drop it out. And it's a Lego, so we've got the rotate options. Now, when you're in with these Lego prefabs that have this brick script on them, 
they act a little bit different and they actually use these Lego tools and you can use them to snap together or to modify the bricks. If I wanna go into like actual brick building mode, I can actually take the bricks here. Let's see, where is it? Oh, single brick, there we go. And go into single brick mode. I can actually take single bricks and drag them around. Uh, Control Z still works to undo. And then I can go into the full. So if I wanna move the whole object to go into this mode or just move the entire object around, and then I can go into brick editing mode where I can actually change the bricks here. In fact, like I might want to do that. And if I was going to use this as a thing, I'd probably do that and remove this top piece. I don't think I want to use this trap though. I think I'm just going to start with the obstacle. Where's Lloyd? Let's take it and we'll rotate it. Um, actually, let's, let's go to the brick mode and rotate it. There we go. I'm not sure if that's better or worse to do it that way, but I'll start with that. Start with it that way. All right, let's see, I've got a trap there, or now an obstacle there. I just wanna run and see what happens if I run into it. Absolutely nothing, he just ran around it. All right, let's try dragging it, whoops. Go out of that mode, W, and move it right over here, maybe down to the ground a little bit, and then rotate, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Okay, so he runs up to it and he can't run anymore. He does keep rotating though. So that's an interesting thing to notice. I'm gonna, I think, just turn off the rotation for now. So the reason he's ro he's rotating still, even though he can't move forward because it's just detecting there's something blocking him, but there's nothing that stops him from rotating. So I'm gonna turn off the continuous rotation temporarily and then let's move this back here. So let's fix that rotation back to a zero. I'll just put this right in front of Lloyd. And then I think I'm gonna move my V cam so that my shot is more like this. Actually here, let's go and reorient him. Nah, I'll just leave it like this. Um, I'll move him back here. I'm trying to think how I want this V cam to look. Uh, I'm just gonna drag it over here. Get a view that's a little bit closer and a little bit to the side. So here I'm just grabbing these values in the body part of the transposer and just dragging them around to get it kind of where I want. I, I want to be kind of back and behind a little bit. I'm not sure what the best view for this is, honestly, though. It might just be like a side view or something um, so you can see yourself running and see exactly when to jump. Actually, let's try it. We'll just set this to zero or maybe actually less than zero, set it to a little bit ahead and then set this one out a bit and then drop this down. There we go, so now I've got a, a good side view here. Let's pull Laloid back. And then we'll hit play. And then I should be able to run up to it, see the obstacle and jump it. Sweet, okay. I mean, that's, uh, I guess, step one of a simple obstacle racing game, right? Be able to actually dodge the obstacle. Um, let's see, what do I want to put in next? Just got to think for a second. Oh, I don't want to grab that ob object. I want to take this one. So we've got this. Um, I really don't like this camera view, though. Actually, let's pull... Um, what do I want to do with the camera? I'm just trying to think of how I want to adjust this. Um, just pull up the aim a little bit and maybe. Tiny bit forward, something like this. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how I, I'm, I'm terribly bad at uh, lining things up for shots, but. Something jingling out there. But I think that that will work for now. Actually, let me let me hit maximize on play. See what it looks like in, in a big full screen view. Okay, so I'm running, racing, racing, racing. Jump, jump. I made it. All right, cool. Now let's add in, um, I wanna add another racer real quick. I wanna get an idea of what it looks like with a second racer. And then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's see, find another minifig. Let's take, uh, maybe I'll race Kai. No, let's race Zane. Let's take Zane out. Grab him. I'm gonna put him right on, where is, oh, there's Lloyd. 
put him right on top of Lloyd, and then drag him out. So he's at the exact same position. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, let's just reset his position. Actually, here, I'll copy it from Lloyd. So right click, copy component on the transform, and then I can go to Zane and right click and paste component values. There we go, got him lined up right next to him, and I just want to put him kind of side by side. So we've got Lloyd and Zane. I'm gonna give Zane a little bit of a head start. Oh, then I'm gonna turn off Zane's input. So go to the minifig controller, disable input, and then do we, is there an automatic move option on this one? Miscellaneous, max jumps in air. Gravity, so there's nothing here. Okay, this controller does not move them forward. Let's add a one button minifig controller. Uh, here, let's search for minifig controller. Yeah, there's only one button one. I was just checking to see if there's another. There might be a thing that runs forward too. If anybody knows of a, oh yeah, maybe a subway surfer view would be better. You're probably right. I'm gonna consider checking that out in a second. If anybody knows of a way to just make one of these characters run forward automatically without this one button minifig controller, if there's another controller or trick to it, um, please let me know. I'm just gonna set this guy to run continuously and do absolutely nothing on input. So he just kind of ignores it and then hit play. All right, there we go. We've got Zane. Oh, now he's ahead of me, perfect. All right, yeah, let's try a subway surfer view real quick. I'm gonna go to the V cam. Actually, I'm just gonna duplicate this cam. I'm gonna turn off the other one that I've got in this side view. Which is name this to side shot. And then let's call this a subway shot. I'm gonna move this shot up so that it's up and behind him. So I'm gonna reset everything real quick. Zero, zero, and put this at a negative, whoops, where did that go? Clicked out of there. I wanna go like a negative 15. I can type, minus, okay. I'm just gonna click and drag this down. It's like, it, it's it's auto-sizing my, or updating my editor constantly, and it's giving me a hard time. And then I'll drag this up, so we've got kind of that. If you actually, I think it'd probably be out a little bit more on the Subway Surfer, more like that, and somewhere around there and then turn the tracked object offset up a bit something like that maybe it come in a little bit more I don't know we'll try it at that angle let's try it hit play and you're running 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 and jump cool all right now let's see we've got one character racing a second character racing um, add in some more stuff so I got racers I'm trying to think of what I want to put in next as the next thing. Actually, I want to go over to my milling up board and just kind of write down some of my ideas here. So it looks like we're going for ninjas running um, and it's going to be some kind of racing. They're going to run and they're going to either speed up from clicks or um, speed up, not slow down by jumping over things. So I'm just going to add in a new column here. I think I'll just Let's maybe I'll trash my ideas, or let's make a board for ideas and inspiration. And I'm gonna move all this stuff over there because I don't need my old ideas anymore. I just need my actual stuff for my game jam. So I've got my stuff I'm considering, the game idea. I'm gonna drop in a to-do list of the things that I want. So I need to add um, win condition, get to race end first. Um, or actually, maybe it's just an end condition. Show position and uh, reward for winning. So it, instead of a win condition, because really it's most half the time they're probably gonna lose. So, and, I, and we're still gonna show pretty much the same thing. So we'll show something when they get to a lose. We'll have jumping over traps um, or obstacles uh, that slow you down if you miss. And then we'll have I think I want to do like some sort of jumping to collect things for speed or some other reason to hit the button to, to go faster. Um, maybe just hitting the button could make you go faster too though. Like while you're playing, just like you hit the button and you're going faster. I, I don't know. I think the jumping is probably more fun though for the kids. So they hit the button, they'll jump. And then if they jump at the right times, um, they'll, They'll get the speed boosts and stuff. I think that makes sense. And then we'll probably do like a light up. 
like some kind of an indicator to let them know that they should be jumping at that time. So that's what I'm gonna go for and I'm gonna cut out these other ideas. So actually here, let's do this. Check, check, check. Actually, I'm gonna leave, actually really just deleting that one because all the rest of these kind of fit. The rhythm thing might kind of fit into there. Um, a jump pit, maybe? I'm not sure, what would be in a jump pit? That was a question, can you add a jump pit? Well, what do you have in mind there that would be in it? I'm kind of curious like how, how that would work, but I definitely, yeah, I think we could do something like that. All right, so we've got characters here. Um, I want to figure out how we give a speed boost now from like a collection. So if we collect something, how do we boost up their speed and make them go faster? I'm going to save real quick. I want to take a look at how they've done it in these other examples to see if there's just already like a, a brick that does it. So I don't write code that we don't necessarily need and we can get that taking advantage of a brick thing. And um, Oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's go take a look. We'll look at the scenes and which one of these is going to have, is it the rescue one? Does this have collectibles? Scenery, any collectibles, any objects at all? Oh, this is the plain one. So this is not going to. What about the training course? I don't, I don't remember seeing anything collectible on the training course either. What game has the collectible stuff? So what's, actually, let's see what this block is. I wanna go find out what this block is right here. So we've got a brick for a nearby trigger that looks to connected bricks. Player action senses the player. So this senses a player. Okay, and then what does it do? If it senses a player, it plays the audio. Oh, yeah, okay. That's pretty simple. So when it senses a player, it plays audio. If a player comes within 10 meters. Relatively straightforward. Do we have any that are pickups? What's this? This is just like a spin block thing. Going to, oops, no, block edit mode. Hazard action. Okay, play some particle effects. Got it, and then this is a spin one or something. There's a spin one on here somewhere. Ah, uh, rotate action. Okay, interesting. Are there any collect actions? What are these more sound ones, I'm guessing? Yeah, sound. Sound and probably moving things, yep. sound and action in range. Okay, these are all just things checking to see if we're in range. So where are the collectibles? I know I saw some stuff for collection in here. We go to prefabs, let's go to, we've got projectiles. That's not what I need. We've got models, we've got a bunch of obstacles, a bunch of characters, some tiles. Okay, we will find these. I know that they're in here. They must be under Lego. Uh, let's see, collect. I'll just search. Brick collections. Cool bricks and starter bricks. Uh, what are these? Let's go take a look. I'm guessing that these are just like uh, interactable bricks. A live action, so if it's alive, what is this one? Oh, these are just different bricks. Yeah, that's not very exciting. That's not what I wanted at all. I'm trying to find the things that you can actually collect. I assumed that since there's all this, all these messages about collecting stuff, that there must have been some collectible objects and some kind of collectible brick, but I'm not seeing anything yet. Oh, I like the double tap for a speed boost. That's not a bad idea. And a finish line and ribbon. I think we'll put both of those in in just a minute, or at least the finish line in, in just a second. There, I just have to see if there's a collection. I, apparently there are just not any collectible objects like I was thinking. Under models, there's really not much at all. What about in add-ons, models, what do we got here? Hmm. They must be under, maybe, prefabs? Pickups, there we go. Got it, so we got crabs, crystals, and fruit. That's what I want, let's do fruit. Okay, we'll take some fruits. I'm gonna go back into my scene. So this is under Lego prefabs, models, pickups. All right, now that I know where it's at, I've got, actually I'll just search for fruit. Now that I know where it's at, I'll, I'll be lazy and just search for it. We'll find the fruit, we'll find Zane, hit F, and then I'm gonna drop the fruit 
in front of Kai and then see if I can figure out how to make the fruit make him move faster. So I've got fruit here. I'll drop it right out here. Not make him jump to grab it at first. And then we'll take a look at the actual brick. So I've got to select the brick here and it's gonna do an audio of a pickup of item. Um, play a sparkle effect. Does it do anything else? I don't know. Let's hit play and see. Interesting. So it picks up for. So I think the objective of the jam is really just to make a game, and they, I think they want to get their brick system out there for people that are kind of new and trying to build a game without having to write too much code. I definitely plan on writing a lot of code throughout this week once we figured out what's already in here and what we need to write code for. I just don't want to write code for things that kind of already exist. So we're going to be, um, yeah, I mean, the, I guess the point of it is just build a fun game, hopefully at least. So we've got our Lego brick asset. I've got this fruit here and then I want the fruit to do something. I think there was like a action, control action, hazard action. How do we speed up a player? Interesting. A lose action, a win action, spawn, a speak, a shoot, a move. What's a hover action do? Amplitude, time, and collide. I have no idea what that's going to do. Let's see if it just makes it hover. Yeah, it does. Okay. So it's just a script, basically. This action, this uh, hover action thing. Only work, but it only works on bricks, got it. And it's on a brick though. Right, these are on Lego bricks, right? Yeah. I don't know why it's giving that warning. Okay, so the pickup action. Fire on those. Um, is there a pickup? Ah, pickup action. Oh, okay, I can just add another one, got it. So I add a pickup action and then it actually shows up here on the model automatically. That is nice. Okay, so what do I want? Oh, but actually it's not that nice because I don't know how to use it. Because <laughs> on the pickup action, it's just sending off that action. So it's not really what I want it to. How do I add in another? What's another brick then? Let's see, characters. Interesting, what are these guys? Let's see what's in these starter bricks. Oh, they're literally just general, regular all bricks. Okay. So how do we make this increase the player's speed? I haven't got the slightest clue. Anybody know how to make this fire off an event? Let's see. Lego bricks. I'm going to see if it actually just has some easy code in here to fire off an event. So let's jump into the code editor now. I'm in Rider. I'm going to resize this so that it fits and everybody can see the screen. We'll take a look at the Lego brick code see how it works and see if we can make it so that the fruit speeds up the character and makes them run faster. So here, this is all checking to see if we're in the editor. Is all of the brick code editor only? Primarily get connected bricks, has connectivity, disconnect all, okay. And get connected bricks. So it's going through, get all the bricks and then do something to them. Not super, super helpful. What about pickup action? Let's take a look at that. Pickup action on added, okay, and on collected. Got some colliders here in start. We call into whatever this base start is of action, which is if is placed on brick, then, and it has some things targeting it or something that it does, then it'll activate itself. Oh, okay. Oh, if it has nothing targeting it, it'll deactivate. Got it. Okay, so if it is placed on brick, it can maybe do a particle system. It can do some sensor stuff. I'm not sure. That's probably to detect when things are in range. And then um, disconnect all bricks on scope, make invisible, blah, 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 blah. Where's something useful for me? So on added gets called, um, oh, okay, when we first initialize the thing. So this is the initialization part. It checks the first time through, it looks like, in an update. If it hasn't been initialized, it initializes and then calls on added to add itself probably to a static collection of all the bricks that are out there or some collection out there or probably maybe multiple, I don't know. 
And then if it's not collected, it'll bounce and rotate. Otherwise it will destroy itself. Okay, and then it calls on collected. So on collected gets fired off. Where's on collected listen to? Pickup trigger. So we have a pickup trigger script. Let's see what this does. Pickup trigger calls pickup collected and pickup collected calls into our pickup actions. Pickup actions are, I don't know, let's go, let's go try this out, pickup trigger. So I'm going to go add this to, um, I'm going to add it to Lloyd real quick. I'm going to add a pickup trigger to him and see what that, if that, or what the options are that I get first. So pickup trigger. So when something gets picked up, target, connected actions, mode all pickups, extra conditions. Okay. Oh. That's a condition. What's the action? How do I add an action? Um, control action hazard. Is there like a, a speed my character up action? That's what I need. Let's do a speak action. Okay. I'll see what this does. I'm really curious. So if I pick this up, am I just going to walk up and get some text over my head? No. I got nothing at all. Should I have got text over my head? I don't even know. Let's go check Lloyd out one more time. This says this, oh, this only works attached to a brick. And is he a brick? He's a minifig, I have no idea. I literally, yeah, I don't know if he, if he counts as a brick or not. Interesting, let's create a new brick. I'm gonna just create an empty brick and try connecting that. So Lego tools. So you have brick building, brick settings, select connect to bricks, show bricks in hierarchy. That definitely seems like a good option. I did not know that was an option there. Uh, what else we got here? Dev force update. Okay, and importing a model. Not what I want. I want to make an actual brick. So let's see. Let's just create an empty game object. Or here, let's just create a starter brick. Just take any old brick out. Oh, all right, pull these bricks out of here. Hmm. Interesting. What if I so the pickup action has to go on these actual child bricks. That is. Then why does it work there? Or the, why does the hover action work? That's interesting. Okay, I'm gonna make another brick. Sorry, I'm just kind of like thinking out loud and thinking to myself and trying to figure this out. So I wanna create another brick. Um, Something simple that will just react when we pick up that, that um, this thing real quick. I wanna see how this works. So I'm gonna add in a, what is this? Some weird treasure chest brick. Okay, cool. And I can see the children here. I like that being able to see them. I, I don't particularly like having them hidden. So touch trigger, um, I don't know what any of this is. Oh, that's to win. I don't want any of that. Interesting. Okay. May I need to make a new brick? I feel like I, I need like a, a very basic one or my own. How do you create a new one? Show import brick tools. Is there a way to like just build a brand new brick? How do we build a brick? You think I should know this? <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna use this one real quick. Let's add a pickup action, or no, pickup trigger. Let's see what this does. Pickup trigger on this brick, and then, oh. Why does it say multi-object editing? Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Interesting. Maybe having that option on here to show the hierarchy is a bad idea. I'm gonna drop this out here again. Okay, we'll drop it out. 
because it, it's adding it to every child when I do that. It's like selecting all of the children and then adding it. So that might be the reason that they've done that. Okay, select the bridge now. It's a little bit weird when you place these things, the selection is just messed up. I'm not a fan of that. Okay, so if we pick something up now, this should do some action. So the action will be a, I don't know what, a rotate action. Let's see what the actions are. Let's do a hover action. Okay, so when we pick up, it'll hover. That's my thought at least. Does this make sense? I guess we'll see. Let's save, hit play, and see if that thing starts hovering once I pick this up. I'm gonna move this, uh, this thing. Actually, let's just move Lloyd back a bit. There we go. All right, so now it's not hovering, it's not hovering. I pick that up. It's still not hovering, okay. That did not do what I was thinking. So yeah, the brick action on the fruit. Let's take a look at that. So the hover, oh, you know what? Yeah, why don't I just do that? I didn't make a new action. Thank you, Michael. This is, so here's what I probably need to do. Let's look at all of the different actions real quick and I'll see if there's one that modifies speed and if not, we'll just make a new action and then make that a brick thing that we can add on easy peasy be the simplest solution all right so i'll search for movement actions first movement actions let's see movement actions they okay it looks like they just move things so these are hovers looks and moves and all that my guess is that these all inherit from some type of action so we have a repeatable action and then below that we have an action so these are the things that are going to go on here so if we make a increase player speed action or speed up player action that should probably work. Then we would just need to implement the activate method is my guess. Um, or is there a method, a different one? Let's see. We've got start, activate, play audio. Don't need to override that. Don't need to override on destroy or you destroy. Let's see what the, um, where's that hover action? Let's see how this one works. So it's got its own fixed update. Um, and then when does it turn on? I'm guessing just in activate, right? So, okay, let's, let's create an action. Let's do it. So we'll make a new action that'll be a speed up player action. I'm just gonna go right to the bottom of the file. Actually, I'll just create a new class in a scripts folder because I don't wanna create this into the Lego subfolder. So I'm gonna right click. We'll create a new scripts folder and we'll start writing some code. All right, thank you for that advice, Mo. That's Getting, getting us down the right track. So here we'll make a um, speed or increase player speed action. There we go. I'm gonna stop playing because we're in play mode. We'll open up that increase player speed action. And then in here we'll inherit from action. And I'm gonna zoom in a bunch and kind of remove some of this extra stuff so you guys can see the screen better. And then hit Alt Enter, and we don't want the type System Action. In fact, I think Action is probably not a good name because it's already a, a very commonly used type. But we'll take the Lego one instead. So we've got the using statement for Unity Lego Behaviors Actions. All right, I'm going to delete out Start and Update, and then just start typing Override, and it'll give us all the options to override. I think we want to call or we want to override the Activate one, and when we activate it, we just want to find the player and increase their speed. So let's go find that player's uh, minifig controller. So what is the one touch minifig? Let's find it. One button minifig controller. One button minifig controller. Oh, it overrides minifig controller. Makes sense. And minifig controller has some option in here for speed. Let's find speed. All right, max forward speed. So we've got a maximum forward speed here that we read. Let's hit Shift F12, find references to it and see where we calculate our actual speed. So it's right here. We calculate our max speed. Oh, that's if we're in tank mode. And this is if we're in what mode? Direct mode. And then this is if we're in, I don't even know what mode. So we've got our max forward speed and we need to be able to modify this. Now I don't wanna modify this actual value because it's a serialized float. If I change it, then I could end up, it's definitely easy for me to end up messing up my prefab values. 
and having it modify them. But I'm gonna be lazy to start and just do it that way. Then we'll add in something to override it on our minifig controller to maybe make a speed modifier. So since this is already public, um, I'm gonna break my normal rule since it's quick for a game jam and just access this modify it even though it's a serialized field. And I'll just watch for it. I expect that I'm gonna end up messing up the value eventually and then we'll fix it. So let's go find our script. We've got our action, our um, increased player speed action. And we need to find the one button minifig controller. In fact, I'm just gonna find it um, on a wake of this thing. because I'm just gonna cache it. I'll say, um, oh, never mind. this already has no wait. I'm just gonna do it on activate. So we'll say var player equals find object to type. And I'm just gonna find the one button minifig controller. And then we'll say player dot speed, what is it, max forward speed star equals 1.1 F. So we'll just give 10% speed increase. In fact, let's go to a 50%. Let's make a multiplier. Serialize field um, float speed multiplier equals 1.5 F. There we go. And we'll use that speed multiplier. So it's going to give me a 50% speed increase every time I activate one of these increased player speed actions. Now I'm gonna go just add that directly onto my fruit, get rid of this stupid bridge that I don't need, and here we'll add an increase player speed action. Oh, but I want this on pickup. Interest, so I need a If I add a pickup listener, what was it called? A pickup trigger. Let's see, I just need, I need these uh, reordered. So the pickup action here should be after the pickup trigger. I don't know. Let's remove the pickup trigger. Let me think. If I move this down, I wonder if this works. Let's try moving this down. I wonder if it looks at the order here. No, I was hoping maybe maybe it was just gonna be order direct or order controlled. Um, I think that what I want to do is put the pickup trigger on. Hmm. What do I do here? So yeah, we have. Oh, the, is there a speed modifier in that controller? Let me take a look at that. Let's go see. So we've got max forward speed. Speed hash, speed, speed, max forward speed. I just wanna make sure there's not something in here that's already doing it. I don't see anything. Acceleration, speed changes. Did I miss it? Maybe there's something up top that I missed. Oh, no, minifig controller. Or maybe it was in the uh, one button one. Is there a speed modifier here? Oh, this actually has its own. Oh, that's interesting. So something to note, this has a max move speed and this has a max forward speed. So I need to change and use the max move speed, move max speed, but is there a um, modifier here? Let's see, speed. going through this real quick to check. Okay, so I, I do wanna use that uh, max move, what's it called, move speed again? I already lost it. Max move speed, so let's change that. I wanna make sure that we use that one instead. And is this one publicly accessible? One button minifig controller. Why is that not? Oh wait, was it just a type? No. I'm very, I'm a little bit confused here. We got our one button minifig controller, max move speed, or max, move max. Why can't, maybe that's the problem is I'm just typing the wrong word. It's move max speed, and not max move. No. I, what? Is this in a different class here? Is that, oh, that's probably what it is. Huh? Yeah, it's motion settings, I'm an idiot. So 
in here, inside of this class, in, let me just show everybody what was going on here. Because if you're watching along, you might have gotten lost too. So this is in the one button minifig controller. The max move speed set option I'm looking at is in a subclass of it, the motion setting. So I need to find the, um, the actual setting for it. Oh, because it's got the... Okay, so where's this motion setting set? Let's find it. Or actually, where's this red from? Max move speed gets red from new setting dot. Okay, and that gets our movement target speed. Ooh, this could be. Okay, we're gonna add in a multiplier, I lied. So we're just gonna say uh, movement multiplier or move Let's call it move speed increase. And we're gonna say plus equals our speed multiplier. And here I'm gonna set this to a 0 0.5. So we've got a move speed, actually let's call it move speed multiplier. There we go, we'll copy that. And we're just gonna generate this as a, um, should we generate it as a property? Yeah, I think I'll make it as a property. And we'll make this a property on the minifig controller, not the one button minifig controller. So I'm actually gonna move this up. Let's hit enter there. Oh, control shift R. And I want to push this member up or down, sorry. Oops, no, sorry, up. Okay, wrong button. Pull member up to the minifig controller. Did it get my option? There we go. And now I should have my multiplier, let's see. All right, we got our move speed multiplier. So now I'm gonna look at the part where we, oh. There's already a speed multiplier. This is probably what you were talking about, huh? On the move target. That's not what I want, I don't think. No, well, maybe it is. We've got this speed multiplier right here. Let me. Find the references to this where we've got a move target. Oh, no, yeah, that's not what I want. Okay, that was a distraction there. So I just wanna make sure that we're doing the right thing. So we've got speed. I wanna get our max forward speed. It gets our target speed. We've got a speed multiplier here. We're just gonna add in our other speed multiplier. So, oh, maybe I should use, where is it getting this? It's getting this, hold on, let's go up the call stack. From here, yeah, where it's trying to get it from a specific move. And a specific move's speed multiplier is going to be set. Yeah, what is current move? Current move is defined as, yeah, the thing that we want to move to. Okay. I think, I'm pretty sure that that's, it's trying to do a specific movement. So I'm going to go back, find it one more time, and I'm actually going to add in my speed multiplier part. Once I figure out the part where we're fit, setting our speed, there it is. Times speed, move speed multiplier, there we go. And this is, I think, gonna be used for, um, I'm not sure, I think animations and for moving to a target over a certain amount of time, but I'm not completely sure. So I'm just gonna add that right in there. And then do we have any other instances of our max speed? Max forward speed, we get our value there. It's in the direct mode. Am, are we using direct? I think so. Got target speed getting set. All right, I'm gonna try that. So I've got, oops, control Z, save. We've got our move speed multiplier added. I'm gonna go try this out. Yeah, coding is definitely allowed in the jam. I think they just want you to use, um, they want you to use their things too, but you can also just write code. So I'm gonna be doing a bit of both, it's kind of the plan. So on our pickup action, oh, actually I wonder if this is right now. It's got the pickup trigger, underneath it it's got these two actions. Yeah, let's hit play and see. I think my speed's gonna get a lot faster though. 
because I've set it to 1.5. No, it didn't increase at all. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Got a couple errors here. Let's hit collapse and see what's going on. Instance of action editor couldn't be created because it needs to be something. What is this action editor for? Okay, let's clear. I'm gonna clear real quick, make sure that we don't just have any editor errors. See if there are any playtime errors and then figure out why it's not going. So no errors at runtime. Okay, let's hit play. I'm gonna turn off maximize. Let it run and grab that. So it grabs the power up. Cool, but it doesn't seem to have changed anything on our character. Oh, selecting the fruit is what's giving this error. So let's take a look at the increased player speed action real quick. I'm gonna add in a breakpoint. So just hit F5 here. We'll attach, and then we'll stop playing, play again. I wanna see when that fires off. If it fires off right at the beginning, if it never fires off, um, I would have assumed that activate happens when we pick the thing up, but no, apparently not. So we don't activate it when we pick it up, or our trigger isn't firing off, um, but we do get the pickup. Oh, weird, these got, the order of these changed already. Okay, stop playing. This would be a lot easier if I wasn't using the blocks. The blocks make it a little bit confusing, to be honest, but we'll get it figured out. I'm kind of curious on how this all is supposed to work. So I want it so that when we get our action, when we do our trigger, let's see, we do a pickup action. I'm gonna look at the script again, the pickup action. Let me see how this works. So on collected, on added, right? No, it's on collected, that's what we care about. So when we pick it up, on collected gets called, which fires off into these pickup triggers, which then call pickup collected. And then pickup collected just goes through and fires off. Oh no, what does it do? It checks to see if we have anything and then it, it increments its progress. And then it's trigger here, what does it do? If the progress is less than the goal, ah, then it invokes it. So let's take a look. Maybe I just didn't put goals on my pickup actions. That's probably what it is. is my pickup triggers probably needed something. No. Nope. Target, connected actions or specific actions. I can make a specific action. Oh, connected is all of the actions that are on it. I got it, okay. So if I made it specific actions, what actions could I do? Fruit pickup, fruit hover. Ah, okay. So. If I pick up the fruit, um, every time I pick up, repeat it. Uh, it makes sense, like it should work. Let's, let's try it out. I'm gonna edit the script and add in a breakpoint real quick and we'll see. So the progress should go up. I assume the progress at default is gonna be at zero and then it's gonna go get incremented right here on pickup collected. So let's hit play, debug it and see what happens. So we run up. Oh wait, the fruit like got picked up on its own automatically. What happened there? We've got our fruit. I wonder if it doesn't like my increased player speed action. And that's what's causing the editor error. Let's remove that real quick. I'm gonna clear log and go back off and on it. It is. So it's probably that it um, needs some script in there to, to render it, to make an action. I'm gonna have to go in there and figure out how to do that. That shouldn't be too hard though. Let's see, I've got my pickup trigger. Let's just hit debug or hit play. I wanna see if this works. Pickup trigger. No, it's just like automatically instantly picked itself up. Why is it doing that? Okay, so we've got this. Let's turn off this pickup trigger. We've just got the hover action and just the pickup action. Okay, let's remove the trigger. I've broken something somehow. So we'll remove our pickup trigger completely. Just have the hover action and the pickup trigger. Or the hover action and the pickup, got it, okay. Then we'll add in another brick. So let's go into, how do I just drop another brick onto here? That's the question, like how do I make a new brick that attaches to this? Like a new logic brick type thing. 
There must be a way to do it. Oh, you know, maybe if I expand out or make it so I can see the children, select, no, not select connected. Um, show bricks in hierarchy. Hmm. Let's see. Let's call this an empty logic brick. I'm curious how this works. So we'll reset this. I'm gonna add a model. This is just for the Lego model. Uh, do I even need that? I'm not sure. And then I'll add the brick. Oh, what happened? Where did it go? That was strange. Oh, because the bricks are children. Got it. The brick should be a child here. There we go, then it won't hide because it auto hid when I made the brick parent here a, a, an object. So let's try the trigger here. So I'm gonna add in a pickup trigger and then we'll just look for any pickup and then when that happens, we will play a, an action. Let's see, let's just start with an audio action. The audio action will play birds. Cool, seems good. Let's hit play. Let's see if I sound, hear birds at least when we pick this up. Nope, what is going on here? So why do we not? Oh, cause this has to be connected. So let's change that from connected. Let's see, or actually here, maybe we can connect to this brick somehow. So we take our brick here. Okay, let's see, let's move this over by our other brick and then see how we can somehow connect these. Okay, oh, why is my thing all rotated weird? That is so strange. Weird, what have I done? Move these behaviors down. I wonder if that works. The behaviors onto this child, the, the brick. And then go into, is this single mode? Brick building mode, okay. So here I should be able to select individual bricks. Why can't I select them now? That's weird. Is it this mode? Single brick selection now, okay. Oh, okay, there we go. So that's our single and connect. God, this is so very, very confusing. Ah, okay, and here we've got our dynamic brick, and this has the pickup actions. Starting to understand the way this is put together. So the base object doesn't get actions. The base object gets, the actions go underneath. They go onto these other child bricks here. So this fruit here should have the hover action on the child instead of on the base. And I don't know why it was still working, but I'm guessing and move it down to the child there. This thing's gonna hover just fine. Yep, there we go, cool. And then for my pickup bricks, I've got this here, and then underneath it, I've got my child that has the audio action on it and the pickup trigger. But it's only looking for things that are connected. So I need to figure out how I connect this brick with the other one. And I assume that it's just that I've got Let's see, is it because of that option there? Why can't I select this brick? What is this mode? Brick building mode, okay. And I've got single brick selection on, but I can't seem to select my bricks anymore. Oh, go to move, move tool. There we go, now I can move my bricks. Okay, let's see if I can select this other brick though. Oh, it's because it's like an empty logic brick. Interesting. This is so very, very weird. <laughs> All right, let's add an action. I'm gonna call it the fruit pickup. I'm just gonna bind directly to that one instead of connected actions, and then see if that works. So I can connect directly to that one. Let's see what this bird sound 
it sounds like. Okay, and then let's play. Let's see if we get this sound effect now. Oops. Oh, it got picked up instantly. Why did that happen? Stop auto playing. It stopped hovering. Where, where'd the stupid hover thing go? Got my fruit with its hover action. It's got a pickup action and a hover action. I've got my empty logic brick. Did that like break it? No. Logic brick was unrelated. So somehow I broke my fruit. And I don't know how. It's got a pickup. Telling you that using pre-built kits always makes things more complicated for me. It makes it so much more confusing trying to figure out what's going on and why things are doing what they're doing instead of, especially for simple games. Like building a, a pickup system with a thing that bounces up and down should be the simplest thing in the world, but for some reason, this stupid thing is disappearing now, and I don't know why. I haven't done anything to make it disappear. I just decided it's going to disappear. What if I delete my stupid empty logic brick completely? See if it's my disabled object. Oh yeah, so it's my disabled, <laughs> my disabled game object that happened to be referencing it caused it to happen, and I don't understand why. Let's hit play. So when I pick it up, it should do something. Let's turn it on. So it's connected to that, okay, because it is connected to that brick, it sees the connection. Let's try again. Yeah, why is it turning off? What's going on here? Cannot find original file, don't care about that. I don't think. Um, it's very, very confusing. Okay, I'm gonna jump back into the code. And take a look at the pickup action. I wanna see why or how that's getting called. So I'm just gonna attach real quick. Oh, we're already attached. Okay, let's reattach. So pickup collected isn't getting called. Is pickup added getting called? I, I don't get this thing. I might just start writing some code and just deal with the uh, the pickups on our own so that we don't have to deal with um, the block system because while it's nice to have and all that, I'm getting the sense that it's just gonna make things more and more difficult. So I think, let's see, we've got our pickup trigger. I'm gonna delete this empty logic block here and I'm going to add in a script and I'm gonna make it a really simple script that just does a increase player speed on pickup. We're gonna do this nice and simple and stop wasting time. So I'll say increase player speed on pickup. Generate that as a script in my scripts folder now. Oh, it's not in my scripts folder, so I'll move it to my scripts folder. Let's see, where'd that go? Right into the root. Let's drop it into scripts. And then I'm gonna attach it onto the fruit and then I'll write the code for it. Cause this is yeah, not the way that I like to deal with things. I don't wanna go through debugging somebody else's framework and stuff to do some really, really simple tasks. So I've got a pickup option or a pickup thing that already fires off and, and I will use that. We've got our pickup action. It fires off an on added that kind of just is static and easy to register for. So if we go into our increased speed on pickup, I'm gonna delete out start and update. We'll add it in awake. Let's zoom this in. Here we're gonna just get into some real quick, fast working code. We'll say pickup action dot on collected plus equals. So here we're just registering for the on collected event and we'll just create a method called on collected. It'll give us the parameters here for our pickup action. I'll just call this pickup action. I'm not sure what's in a pickup action. Hit shift F or control click on it to see. Pickup action, oh, it's literally just the action that fired off. So it'll give us the object that um, that we used. Yeah, I, what I said, I didn't know what was in pickup action. I was just looking in that class. It's getting mixed up because it's weird. I guess it's passing it in because it's on any one changed. We're getting the event for the one that changed. All right, I wanna add in an on destroy that deregisters this method. So I'll just add it on destroy. Um, let's delete, 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 delete. It's gonna get this lined up right. 
and my, my auto complete messed up and we'll change this to a minus. It's just to remove the event registration so that way if this thing gets destroyed and deleted, we don't double re register for the event. Just to have it, probably not necessary for this game, but good to do anyway. So on collected, what do we wanna do? Same thing that we were doing in the other increase player speed action. I'll literally just copy this code out or cut that code out. Uh, oh, let's, let's do a copy, let's do control C. That way this code still works if we ever decide to go back to it over this next week and we'll paste it in. We'll add in a using statement. So add in that reference to the Lego minifig and get rid of those extra using statements. And then we'll add in the speed multiplier. Let's just copy that over from here as well. So just select the whole line, copy it, go back over here and paste it in. I should use my little uh, copy paste keys for this, huh? I'm doing a lot of copy pasting. All right, we'll save and I think that's it. That should give us our speed increase. Oh, I wanna stop debugging though. Got debug mode running. Let's stop debugging. And then we've got our increased player speed on pickup. I think I just want to, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna attach this to the game, to the player. So I'm gonna say get component instead of find object or type, which we'll is get the one button minifig controller on this game object. So then I'll go to my player, go to Laloid and we'll expand and we'll collapse that out and we'll just add the increase player speed on pickup. Oh, that's perfect. All right, we'll save, hit play, and now Lloyd should go faster when he picks this thing up. Let's see. Yep, there we go. I can see the speed increase. All right, let's try it again. Let's crank that value up a little bit more though. Or here, let's just add multiple fruits. That'll make it easy to tell. So we'll take one fruit. I'm gonna go into W and go out of brick building mode, duplicate it. Take another one, duplicate it, duplicate it, and duplicate it. All right, got four in a row. He should start to speed up and just run faster and faster. He's not running faster. Why is he not running faster? Oh, we've got a null reference exception. So it says that it couldn't find the, is it the one button minifig controller? Did I add it onto the wrong object? What's going on here? Oh yes, I did. I added, I, okay. I see what I've done here. I need to change this back. Find object of type. Wait, let me think. No, 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 no. I've done it wrong. Okay, this should be a get component call and I need to remove it from the fruit. I've added it to the fruit. I wanted to add it to the player. Whoopsie, remove component. Did I already add it to Lloyd? I might've already added it to him too. I did, okay. Let's try it. All right, now he should speed up. It's still getting an exception. What's the exception? Get component. Where is it trying to get the component? Let's, let's. What did I miss here? We find our one button minifig controller on here. Increase player. Here, let, let's catch this. So I want this to be on the character. I don't want this to be something that's on the, uh, the fruit itself. So I'll say controller, or let's call this one button mini fix. Sweet. <laughs> that scared the crap out of me. It's like the fifth time this has happened. So here, let's look real quick. I don't know if you guys can see the, the little uh, magnetic wall poster things. They just keep falling down. I got them a, a while ago because they were Star Wars themed and really cool. But um, I don't even know where the other one went. Where did it go? Let's see. Oh way down here now. There goes Hoth. You can see they, uh, they have this magnetic sticky thing here, but then they have this crappy tape that goes on it and then it's supposed to hold it on the wall. It doesn't seem to hold. So far they've all fallen multiple times um, and gotten dented up and stuff. So. I don't know, maybe there's a better solution. I'm probably gonna end up just drilling those magnets into the wall or something to hold them up because the sticky tape solution on magnets just doesn't seem viable. They're way too heavy. All right, let's jump back into code real quick and we'll get this uh, serialized field fixed up and, and working again. All right, so back in desktop mode. Um, so the speed multiplier that we're adding here, so there was a question from Michael about whether this would lower the speed and actually it's increasing it because we're gonna start with a speed multiplier of one, which is probably Oh, you know what? I don't think I'm even using that because it should be starting at zero and not moving me at all. But it, the idea was that it would increase it from one to 1 1.5 to two to 2.5 and so on. But I think that since it's not actually being set, 
it must not actually be getting used. Let's see. So it's it's used right here. There must be another spot where we use our one button minifig controller. We've got, what is it, move forward speed? Or move speed, or is it max move? Move, it was move max, I remember. It was one of those weird ones. That had move max speed and this right here, let's see, what line is this? Set movement to access, yeah, it's probably this right here. Times move speed multiplier. I think if I add that in here and then make this, oh wait, no, we need to multiply that on the next line. So say, Seem right? Let's see, our move speed is a float. We've got our move speed multiplier. Oh, this is a static. Um, what is this, a static method of what? Static set movement access. <sighs> the complication here. Movement target speed, let's see, where is this? Okay, we've got our target speed. Okay, here's where I can do it, in movement. I, I had it in the wrong spot, I think. So in our movement method, adjust the speed based on target speed. And here I'll just increase the target speed. So say target speed star equals move speed multiplier. So now I should expect my character to not move at all until I turn up that move speed multiplier. I wanna make sure that that's true. And then we'll go fix this, uh, the rest of the serialization issue. Uh, that uh, metal poster falling off the wall startled me out of my line, train of thought real quick. All right, so he's not moving at all, perfect. And then we jump back into the minifig controller script. Let's go open that up. Let's set that default move speed multiplier to one. So to say equals one F, which you can do on properties now. So we've got a property here, we're setting it up to one. Let's just hit play. Should see him set it to one. Cool, and then let's go fix this issue so that we have the reference to our minifig controller. So here it says that, or here I've added a serialized field to reference it instead of calling get component. And I'm just gonna paste that right in here. And then we're gonna add in an on validate. So say on validate, and on validate, we're going to set this to the find thing. So here, let's uh, paste, copy, and paste. So we'll set the minifig controller to the, whatever the component will cache it essentially. And then on collected, we'll call it. Now it should be finding it at runtime, but it's not. And I'm trying to figure out why, but I think that caching is probably a better idea anyway. So let's see what's going on with the caching and then we'll see if there's still an issue. All right, so we've got our increase. It's got the right reference there. These fruits should not have that increase script on them. Zane shouldn't either. Let's double check that he doesn't. Okay, looks good. Let's clear the errors hit play and see if we have any more problems. Nope, well, it's going, there we go, and he's getting faster. I think you probably started to see that, right? Let's check it out one more time. Watch the Lloyd, and I'm gonna move this obstacle back a bunch. Let's take it and just drag it way back here and hit play. Looking good, so now he gets faster and faster. So now to add in a little bit of a uh, skill requirement, we could just increase the height of these so that you have to jump. All right, just nice and nice simple one. Oh, here, let's uh, I undo that because I think I got the child there. Let's take all of these fruits, let's select them all and just drag them up to the sky. Oh, we've got one more fruit that's still on the ground, that's fine. But we'll leave those up there and let's see if I can now run and Time my jumps. Nope, I'm not a very good jump timer, so I missed all of them and lost the race. Um, I might be better at timing my jump if I switch cameras. If I switch to this uh, side view, let's switch to the side shot. I got the second camera set up here. Hit play. I'm curious what it looks like on this one too. There we go. I got one fruit. Made me faster, and now I can beat him. Okay, cool. That seems like it's somewhat working. I, mean, I got the basics down and I think the idea of not working with um, just all blocks, right? We'll do a bit of 
a bit of blocks and a bit of code because writing a tiny little bit of code was a whole lot easier than getting those blocks figured out. Uh, there's an issue here. What is it saying with the error was that it couldn't find a minifig? Can oh, I bet it's this fruit right here. Yeah, this fruit still has the script on it. That's the problem. I had a prefab up here separated from my other fruits and that one was a little bit different, had that duplicate script on it. So it's causing that error or causing this exception here. All right, so I've got my characters running. Um, I've got them able to pick things up. I think I wanna adjust these fruits a little bit more and then maybe make it so Zane can pick up fruit as well and get some speed boosts. See. make the code so that it works so that uh, it works for both characters at least so that the other guy can go pick up a fruit too so i'm going to turn oh here let's just hit play right now what's going to happen is zane's going to pick it up and it speeds up lloyd yeah so what i need to do is make it so that lloyd's script here the one that increases player speed on pickup only does it if he's the one that picks it up so let's see in the pickup action if there's any data there. Pickup action dot, let's see, do we have any idea of what what fire, what fire collected it? Let's find the on collected call. So here we'll go to the pickup action on collected and when it gets invoked, which is gonna be probably right here, it just passes in its own object. But do we have a reference to the thing that interacted with it? So it gets invoked when we pick up and that's going to be in here. So when we pick up, I know this is probably in an update, no? Okay. So if it's not collected, it'll move and rotate and then check to see if it's picked up. So if it has no colliders left, oh, it's, if it's greater than zero, if it has colliders, um, oh, what is active colliders? Let's see. I'm guessing active colliders is some set of colliders that detect something. Sensory collider activated. Okay, so it adds in the collider that was activated. What does a sensory collider have on it? And active triggers that add other. So how do we get that trigger? Out? How do we know what the thing was that fire, that triggered it? Hmm. So it can sense things by tag, but it doesn't seem to tell us what it actually hit. And I kind of like that. I'd like to know what thing it did. But then again, um, here's one other option I could do is on our fruit, or here, yeah, on this guy. So let's go to Zane. Let's add that increased player speed on pickup. Um, I could theoretically just target this down to a tag or something so that we only increase it if the thing that was picked up's tag matches. Uh, I'd rather have it just pick up based on the player that hits it though, because that just makes a lot more sense. So let's go back into this. So when we collect something, let's just hit, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna hit F5. We're gonna hit play, we're gonna go collect something and just get a real quick idea of what's going on for the data in this, in this collection. So we've got our pickup action here and I just wanna, view it. Sometimes this just gives me a good idea of something that I've missed because there's just this class is relatively big. A lot of these classes are relatively big. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. So I'd like to see kind of what's in there. So it's got a couple colliders for the fruit and stuff. Um, does it have any info about what hit it? It's got a tag, a name, some runtime stuff. Not seeing a whole lot has this fact that it was collected. Got these behavior colliders. Let's see, did they say what they've hit? I, I don't think that they do. This thing senses players. Take a little bit deeper look. Yeah, I don't see anything. So I think we're just gonna need to add something to it. I think I'll do that now. We'll add a way to keep track of what thing collected it or what the um, uh, 
collector was. Do I, how do I want to do that? Because I, I want to minimize making changes to their system, but I still want to make it happen. So when we collect, um, let, let's do this the, the quick hacky way first. And then I think maybe tomorrow we'll clean it up once we think this through a little bit more. But we'll start by checking the tag. We'll just say if um, game object dot compare tag, and we'll compare our tag, so game object dot tag with the other things tag, the pickup options dot tag. So if they don't match, or if they do match, I want to do that. Uh, here, actually, we'll just check. We don't need to check. We don't need to compare our tag. We'll just do a comparison there. And here, uh, no, never mind. That's what we want. If game object that compare tag to the pickup option tag, getting my tag tag comparison code all wrong. Um, then we'll do the multiplier. So here I'm just going to make sure that we will match them by tag temporarily, and then um, tomorrow as we start writing more code, we'll make it so that these systems can determine which NP or which player hit it, and then increase the speed of that player instead of having to specify them in the scene. Specifying them in the scene is just a real quick, easy way to do it without changing their code because there's just not, um, there's, there's, there's a lot to their code that I, I don't want to dive into just yet. So let's find Zane. I'm just going to make a new tag for Zane. So we'll just go into tags, hit plus, and we'll call one Zane for now. And then I'm just going to give Zane's power up his same tag so that oh, he only he can pick up things that match him. And then, oh wait, but then these, aren't going to match. Um, what's what's the tag on these? Untagged. So if they're untagged, I'm going to give it to the player for now. And then temporarily, if they're tagged, I'm going to give it to the character that they're tagged for. So these fruits are regular, and then this is Zane's fruit. So I'll add in Zane. Make it really obvious that this one's for him. We'll switch that over to Zane. And then I'm going to go right back into the code one more time and make it so that untagged stuff goes to the player. So if the game object compare tag um, happens, if that's true, or if, um, let's see, so here we're on the player, game object dot compare tag player. So if, we're, if we are the player and pickup option dot compare tag, and here we want to check for untagged. Yeah, then we'll do this as well. And I'm just gonna make this an else. It could probably, it could just be an or statement here. It could be if that's the case or if that's the case. But I'm just gonna separate them out temporarily into an else. And then we'll, again, we can clean stuff up as we go. But for now, let's just make it work. So Zane should now get the speed boost when he gets his thing. There we go. And then I get a speed boost when I get to mine. So let's see, where did my camera go? What happened? Oh, my VM cam. Let's turn that one back on. There we go. Play. I should see Zane get a speed increase there. He starts going quicker and quicker, and I can't catch up to him because I missed my two things. All right, that looks like it's actually working, and then they both fall to their doom. So we need to add in a, uh, a way to win the game or a way to end the game, but I think I'll probably end up doing that in the next session, probably tomorrow. So somebody asked what tagging does. A tag is just an option on a game object that gives you a way to essentially tag it as a thing. So you can specify whatever you want. You can create new tags. Just go and hit add tag, type in the text for the tag that you want. Or you can see I only have four tags here because there are a bunch of built-in tags. There are a bunch of kind of default ones. There's a player one. There's a main camera one that gets added to the main camera. Um, some uh, untagged just means nothing. And then a couple other options here. Editor only stuff gets stripped out if it's not in the editor. So don't use that unless you know what you're using it for. And you can create other ones and then just do a quick compare tag to see if they match. So what we're doing here is making sure that Zane, his tag here, which is, oh, not set to tag, let's set that to Zane, that his tag matches our fruits tag. And if that's the case, he should get a speed increase. Let's try that one. I actually, I want to make sure that he was getting that speed increase. Let's give him a couple more fruits. So I've got my fruit for Zane. Oops, let's stop playing. Duplicate it, drag out a couple more of them. And I expect that every time he runs over one, he gets faster and faster. Should be able to tell relatively easily. Oh, he's not colliding with any of them now. Okay, 
Interesting. So let's figure that out. So why is Zane not getting the pickups for those guys? I'm going to add in a breakpoint here. I'm going to disable Lloyd and hit play. Expect Zane to run forward. I won't get a render of it, so my camera is not going to show anything. Oh, come the camera is camera just locked in position. Um, oh, you know why? I know why. It's because this tag isn't checked on these pickups. I bet these pickups only work. Let's go take a look at it. I bet pickup actions only work for a player. And that's what I'm missing here. So let's see, pickup action. Yep. I saw a mention of a player already. Yeah, set up sensory collider. So it senses against the player, sensing against the player. Let's see, what does that do? I think that just checks for the player tag. I'm gonna check. Yep, it compares against the player tag. Um, so I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna add in or it's equal to Zane. Again, temporary fix until we add in the slightly more intelligent code. Let's hit play one more time. Uh, the IDE I'm using is Rider, by the way. There's a question about that, so I wanted to share. Let's see, let's go take a look at Zane real quick. So Zane is picking these things up. I don't know if he's actually getting the speed increase though. He doesn't seem very fast, so I'm not getting the sense that he is. He should be modifying this guy's, so let's see, I'm on Zane, should be modifying his own one button minifig controller script and modifying that speed. So let's uh, let's go into breakpoint mode real quick. I'm gonna hit F5. We're gonna see if he is actually doing that. So I'll pick one up, okay. We compare tag, yep. Oh wait, what? What happened? Game object compare tag Zane versus untag, oh. Why is the pickup action untagged? What's the game object for it? Let's see. Scene path, fruit, zane. Oh, it's on the child. Okay, so here's an important thing to note about tags. Let's take a look at it. Let's stop playing. I've got my zane guy is on the correct tag. He's on the zane tag. And that, that seems totally fine, right? But if I go to my fruits here and I look at them, look at the tag down here when I click on it. The children aren't tagged to match the parent. Um, and that is an issue. It happens for layers, the tags get passed down, but for the children, or for tags, that does not happen. So I'm gonna select all of these, select the children, and go to tags. Again, I wouldn't recommend using tags as like a long-term solution for anything. When um, The reason we're not using get component on the player is because right now this thing doesn't pass in the object that hit it. It's really convoluted and confusing but it's made to set up to work for these Lego bricks and it makes it a lot more difficult to just detect what object actually hit it without going in and modifying the code. It's trying to cheat, make it simple and use a tag to make it a kind of a, a quick fix, but to be honest, it's just making it even more complicated and more confusing. So I'll probably bounce away from that in, in the next stream or in the next section when, when we go through it and just redo that so that it just detects on the player and knows what player, because the tag thing Supposed to be a quick solution, not so much. So here's our Zane object and we're picking, why is it still saying I'm picking up something untagged? Okay, there must be child objects underneath this that are hidden too or something. Guessing that's the case. Let's go to Lego tools. Yeah, show bricks in hierarchy and then expand it out. Yeah, it's all of these. So all of these are untagged as well. So again, d don't follow my example of using tags next time. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna go select all of these and tag them. And follow my suggestion of the in the next section where we're gonna go through and write the code. Don't don't do the tag thing. There we go. Tags like that. Tags are working though, and Zane is getting quicker and quicker. Alright, I'm gonna stop playing one more time. Minimize all this stuff out. Minimize out my fruits, my Zane fruits. And then I'm gonna go to let's see, what do I want to go to? I want to go to my subway shot. I think I want to leave the subway shot on, yeah. And I'll just turn on Lloyd. All right, I'll pull Lloyd and Zane back. Let's see, where's Zane? Come back to the beginning. And start and play. See, now I should be able to run. And if I'm good, 
I could beat Zane. If I suck, he'll beat me. Hey, look at that, that was good. Let's try one more time. Maximized. Now he's faster than me. All right, um, I think that's good. I, I've already gone for two hours and I wanted to do about two hours a day. So I think that tomorrow at the same time, we'll just kick off and continue on. We'll build the rest of the game or, or the next piece of it, probably add in the finish line, get rid of the tag stuff because I'm not a big fan of it. And then um, add in some more racers and then build up maybe a bit of a track. I don't know how much, we'll, we'll just get as much done tomorrow as can and then continue on. It'll probably be mostly code tomorrow instead of uh, a lot of level building or figuring out blocks since we figured out a lot of that. So if you're interested in a lot of the code stuff and how we're going to do that and how we're going to switch around to refactor their stuff so that we can get the events and fight, see what NPC or what character hit a box or whatever thing to get the speed boost, then make sure that you, uh, I guess, join us and tune in for that. It also, I real quickly just wanted to say thanks to everybody who's been in chat giving me lots of great advice and helping me out along the way. It's been really helpful. And thanks everybody for coming out here. If you're gonna do the Lego Jam yourself, make sure you check out the link down below. They've got a lot of instruction, or not a lot of instruction, a little bit of instruction, some rules, and all of the links for all the stuff. And it looks like it's until November 5th or something, but I would recommend just do it now, submit it, see how it goes, spend some time making it fun and flashy. Just, just have fun with it only, you know, again, if it's the kind of thing that you're interested in, you want to do a game jam, you want to have a little fun and kind of limit yourself to something that you can knock out in a relatively short period of time. It's one of the things I really like about this one is that the one button thing and the targeting at a low age makes it really interesting or makes it really easy for me to do this. So it looks like there was a little bit of chat about um, working on a game together. So if anybody is interested in working on a game with Bill or other people want to get together and build stuff too. That's awesome. Definitely talk in chat, drop comments, or j jump into Discord and start um, put something together. I think it'd be very interesting. I'd love to see what other kinds of things people make. Uh, outside of that, just make sure that you're subscribed and hit thumbs up and all that. And I'm going to drop the next stream up in the next hour or so. You'll see it appear and be ready to come join tomorrow. All right. Thanks again, everybody, for joining. I'm going to switch over to camera mode real quick. I'll look at my fallen posters and figure out how I'm going to fix that. See if I can come up with a good solution for that before tomorrow. And to say a quick thanks one more time to everybody. Thanks for coming out. I'll see you all in the, I guess, tomorrow. See you, see you tomorrow. All right. Thanks again. Oh, don't forget to like, subscribe and all that stuff and check out the links down below.